Hello, Dazzletag here. Uh, I've been tagged by my good friend Wise Apple um, with the Living as an Atheist tag. Um, I've got my questions. Um, there's five of them. You can see them on the Zongits Chris uh, YouTube channel where she invented this tag, I, I think. So, uh, question one. Uh, were you raised atheist or did you have a religious upbringing of some sort? Well, in the UK, uh, religion isn't that big a um, thing to the vast majority of people. Um, we've kind of, I'd like to think we've evolved about it. I know this is a completely delusional view, um, but I certainly didn't have a religious upbringing that a, say, a Christian in America or a Muslim in Iran would feel they've had a, um, a religious upbringing. Um, it isn't something that one feels generally comfortable discussing with other people. Uh, so religion isn't a big part of everyday life. I went to a Church of England school. Um, we did have daily prayers. And we did have a vicar come in once a week to talk to us about um, pollution or global warming or putting our litter in bins and things. But nothing too preachy or anything like that. Um, certainly at home, um, my the only kind of religious thing that ever happened was if my mother sort of suspected us of lying, she would whip out a Bible and make us all swear on it. So there was something there, I think, about an inbuilt um, default position of there was a God. So I can't say that I was, I was raised atheist. So sub point 1A, um, if raised religious, when and why did you become an atheist? Was this uh, transition from religion... What was this transition from religion like for you, for your family, etc.? Was this a quick transition or a slow one? Was it easy for you or difficult? Um, I kind of um, came out of religion as, as much as it was, like I say, this, this default position that there was a God um, when I was 26. Um, and I don't know why I had a very scientific upbringing, very scientific education. It just plays such a little part in your life. Um, in the UK, and that unless you take an interest in it, um, you don't really, it doesn't really affect anything enough for you to really have that much of a position on it. Um, so, uh, I mean, it, it just speaks to the power of the meme. You know, you've got something, an idea which almost has a perception filter on it so that you don't examine it too closely. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed by how long it took me to become an atheist, but I didn't face it. I didn't get any kind of um, uh, hassle from anybody or, you know, about it. Um, I think there was still, you know, as soon as you come out as gay, nothing really comes close to it as coming out. You don't really care what people think. Um, so, uh, overall, would you say that other people's belief in God is a good thing, a bad thing, or something you're indifferent about, and why? Um, well, as a rule, I'm... Uh, as People who've put comments on my videos about, you know, sound quality and things like that. I'm largely indifferent to what people think unless, you know, I, um, unless it affects me in some way or in fact it affects um, the, uh, the laws of the land. So um, I think that religion is bad in some respects because it... Um, it it justifies people behavior, behaving in a way which without a religious justification they would never get away with. So if you look at the people in um, these Islamic uh, countries where they've taken offense to another a filmmaker in another country, you know, and, and those countries aren't standing up and saying, well, I'm sorry, we have um, freedom of speech and that's more important than your sensitivities about your religious beliefs. And, you know, we should be absolutely clear about that. You know, nobody kills an ambassador. Nobody would get away with killing an ambassador. Um, and that de that murder being supported by vast numbers of the population. You know, except if it was for religion. And then we all, you know, then everybody seems to sort of sit sit on their hands and, and say, oh, well, oh, you know, it is religion, as though that should mean something. So I think religion is deeply poisonous. Um, in that respect. Um, but there, you know, the 90-year-old granny who's just buried her husband, I can't feel um, as though I want to run up to her and say, you know, you need to hear the, the, the actual truth and, and try and shake her out of her delusion. So, it, you know, if it provides comfort and it, you know, where it does no harm, then I'm indifferent to it. And I think that's the important thing that we should all kind of think about is, you know, the criteria, the reason we don't like religion is because, in part, it's harmful. 
uh, and when we're, when we're, you know, as atheists to campaign about things, we're responding to that potential harm, you know, um, not just the idea of, well, we, we are, you know, crusaders for the truth, because as, you know, many atheists aren't, you know, there's various other um, things that, um, you know, you want to get into, you know, you, you, that might not affect you, like gay marriage and things, whereas atheists have all clubbed together because of it's a reaction against something that is harming other people's rights, and that's why we're reacting to religion. It's not that we think all religious people are stupid. Um, so, three, have you ever been treated differently by people because you're an atheist? If so, please describe this in detail. Well, I've never been treated uh, differently because I'm an atheist that I'm aware of, so that either says nobody cares or people, you know, are too charitable and like me too much to, to say anything. Um, but uh, I, I do have to say that I have treated um, people who are religious differently, um, which I don't feel great about, I suppose. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's an odd thing. Once you start discovering it, you want to wake other people up, don't you? Um, so, I don't know if I, I'm, Scott says I'm, I get a bit obsessed over religion. And we went to somebody's house and she announced that um, she was going to send her son to Sunday school. And of course my instant reaction was, what are you doing? Are you completely insane? Um, and of course, you know, she was embarrassed, um, you know, that I was making her answer these questions about her right to bring up her children exactly as she sees fit, you know? um, So that wasn't great. And I probably am a bit obsessed with religion, so I don't know how many more videos I'm going to do on the subject, <laughs> because I don't want to feel as I'm obsessed. Um, so, uh, number four, if not a religious person, do you consider yourself to be a spiritual person? Why or why not? Um, well, I do not believe myself to be a spiritual person. I don't know what spiritual means. Um, lots of people say it, and they seem to mean different things. Um, I don't think there is anything more than atoms. So, I know people say, oh, that's reductionist, that's reductionist. Because when you say there's something more than atoms, do you mean there's objectively, physically something more than atoms? In which case the answer is no, there is not. However, it, that's an unsatisfying um, explanation. And I think that's where spiritualism kind of comes from. This, you know, atoms can configure themselves in certain ways that can allow that clump of atoms to dream and to reflect and to hope and to love and all those different things. Um, there must be an explanation that is compatible with uh, atomic theory. That is that is fact as far as we know at this time. Yeah. So I don't believe there's anything in addition to that. However, it's not a satisfying explanation just to say, well, everything's made of atoms. There you go. You know, And that's as convincing to a lot of religious people as, you know, it's God is to atheists. So I think we do need to um, avoid reductionist explanations so that people can understand things better. Uh, but that's not to say that there's something physically, objectively, more than atoms. Subjectively, we can clump these things together and we can use um, conceptual ideas in order to provide better explanations for these things. Uh, and I think that's where we need to work um, in our understanding of sort of the science of, uh, of being alive, if that makes any sense. Um, so I, I don't believe in auras or anything anything like that nonsense, but I do understand that wonder of how do you get this bag of chemicals with add a bit of water to it, how do you get consciousness and things like that. You know, I appreciate that that's a, you know, a, a question that does need answering and is, um, you know, on the face of it, um, quite mysterious and wonderful. But I mean, anyone who's looked through a telescope at the moon, for example, will appreciate how amazing and, and, and wonderful that is. Um, so, uh, number five, for many people, belief in God provides hope or comfort with respect to suffering in the world and the inevitability of death. As an atheist, how do you come to terms with these things? How do you come to terms with these things? Well, I don't think that anybody should come to terms with human suffering. I think that, you know, we should do all that we can to alleviate human suffering. I think that anybody, the, the religious viewpoint is so offensive because in part it tells you that there's a plan you know, and this suffering is all part of that plan. Well, you know, the suffering shouldn't be a part of any plan worth following. You know, nobody should be, even religion, even the most devout religious person should be saying, I don't follow a plan that requires people to suffer. You know, everybody, it is, 
a horrible thing that you know children die in Africa of AIDS, and there's only one group of people, philosophically speaking, who are trying to do anything about it. You know, you see the the religious people going out there and, and prophesizing and wanting to hand out Bibles to these people and tell them, you know, don't use condoms. Um, which is utterly horrific, and they should be held to account for it. You know, so um, I'm, I, I certainly would not come to terms with human suffering. I think everybody should be, you know, disgusted by it. Um, the Christianity death cult and the Abrahamic death cults religions, uh, where you know the adherent is becomes jealous of people who've died. You know, becomes envious of the dead, starts to wish for death because they think they're going to get 72 virgins or raisins or dates or whatever um, your personal, de your decoder ring has deciphered for you in, in what those books mean. You know, um, they are death cults and, and we should not come to terms with death either, I don't think. I think we should work as hard as we can to stop death from happening. I think science needs to deliver immortality as soon as possible. Because there's no a death is the end of life, and who? What's good about that? You know, what's there to? I, I, I think there's inevitability, of course. Um, I think that um, you know when you, when you go, you may as well. Well, I don't even know about going peacefully. I think I want to go kicking and screaming out of this world. I want to be renowned for the messiness of my death, and clinging on to life for the last, you know, to the last breath. Um, I don't care if it's, you know, not the experience my loved ones around me want from my death. <laughs> but I think, you know, there's no nobility to somebody, you know, stomping up to the gallows to be hanged. I think that's horrible. And I think that people killing other people is terrible anyway. Um, so uh, that's kind of my view on these subjects. So, um, you know, uh, please consider yourself tagged if you wish to, um, to do one yourself. Otherwise, I will add a couple of tags uh, below in, in the box. So if you've enjoyed these questions, go to Zorn Gips Chris and thank her for her lovely questions and in the, you know, on the off chance that you enjoyed my responses, um, please sub, um, like and uh, recommend. Um, so anyway, um, I'm Jazz Tag and I will speak to you later. Thanks.